Hello, my name is Lee Clark. I'm a contemporary artist working in London and in Margate in the UK. Um, this is a piece of work that I'm showing with Five Years and Darling Pearls London as part of the Platform Projects Art Fair in Athens. The uh, piece is called The Syrian and it was a quite a long, long time coming, this piece. Um, it was made in 2018, but I'd originally started thinking about this project in uh, 2014. Um, I was invited by an artist called Sean Doyle to an Arts Council project to work in a redundant factory in Stoke-on-Trent in the UK um, as part of a project called X Factory. This was a really interesting residency for me because um, Stoke-on-Trent was an interesting place to be at that time. Um, in 2014 there were many many political issues in the town, there was much poverty. Uh, UKIP, the right-wing party at the time were very close to getting in power so there was a lot of conflict between people in the town. When I arrived in Stoke-on-Trent I discovered that uh, one of the well another factory nearby that had closed down in 96 were responsible for making a very popular mass manufactured mass produced A chalkware uh, face or bust. Um, they were called Bosson's Heads and they were very popular among the working classes in the UK for at least 50 years. I grew up with them. It was my first time that I thought about what art was. I used to have these heads above my fireplace and I used to stare at them for hours wondering who they were or where they came from. They were fascinating for me. They were they were hyper real, real. They were otherworldly and exotic. They were heroes. They had a history. Um, they spoke other languages, and, and for me, they were very inspiring. Um, it was very unusual as well because at that time, these people never were, were never seen as a threat to anybody. They were, you know, they were men of the desert. They had this kind of mystery about them. So it was very interesting as a, as a working class kid growing up with these, these heads. We had about, I don't know, we had about 10 of them above the fireplace. And I loved them. They were wonderful things. Um, they were made by the Bossons factory. Uh, Mr. Bossons, the guy that designed them, came back from World War II. He was a printmaker, he was a master printer, and so he knew about uh, reproducing things, mass manufacturing things, repeating things, and he teamed up with his father, who was a ceramicist in Stoke-on-Trent, and they put their ideas together, and they started to mass manufacture these heads, and they, be they became very, very popular. Their factory consisted of both men and women, uh, the men would cast, do all the casting, and the women would do all the painting. The women were called paintresses, and uh, some of the women would be were painting there for many decades. Um, they are collectible. They are collected by many people all over the world now. The most produced head by Bossons weirdly was the Syrian. Uh, he is the um, cheapest one to buy I suppose. He was the, he's the cheapest one to buy on eBay because he's the most popular one uh, and this, this became interesting for me because during the time I did the residency in 2014 as well as the political backdrop that was in Stoke-on-Trent there was also the destruction of Aleppo in Syria that was very upsetting for me and it was at, at that time where we had hundreds of thousands of refugees coming to Europe because of their displacement in Syria. Um, so it was a very very alarming and 
upsetting time. So the Syrian head became a fascinating object for me while I was in Stoke-on-Trent. Uh, this is an image of a Bosson's collector, and you'll find that Bosson's collectors, they're really obsessed by, by these heads, and they, they really take Bosson's collecting seriously. Um, so seriously. That they come in their coach loads from the USA to Congleton, which is the town near Stoke-on-Trent, just to see the factory, which is, which is just a old factory now you know they all go to the local pub and swap stories but it's quite odd because nothing really goes on there it's quite interesting there's a small museum but that, that's about it so during the time I did the residency in Stoke-on-Trent I decided that I would buy every Syrian head on eBay um, made by Boston's and I think during the residency I managed to buy 25 of them there were 25 available at that time and I brought them into the space I started working with them the outcome of them I, I did these enormous um, screen printed banners that, that took up a 3,000 square foot space in a redundant factory but for me uh, it was unfinished business after I, I left the residency and the exhibition. I, I decided to carry on buying the heads. And by, by 2018, I'd collected around 100, 100 of these Syrian heads. And of course, during that time, during the four years I was collecting these heads, A, you know Aleppo was just dust um, and many 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 people had been murdered and killed and it was just awful and it, and it's and it goes on it goes on well, the interesting things about the head itself is that when you remove the face you reveal this chalk um, this was this was poignant for me for a, a number of reasons. I think the, the first one was that um, having read a lot of the stories of Syrians, they when they said that a lot of them said that when they arrived in Europe, they felt that their identity had been stripped. Um, and one of the other interesting things that I kept hearing from the reports was that. Many people that were in the camps in Calais, they would say that they they knew that if they saw the White Cliffs of Dover in the UK, then they were free and they'd survived and they were they could start a new life. Um, course uh, <coughs> there were other many many other problems around that time um, especially the way people were looking at Syrian people um, right-wing factions didn't help that this was an advert <coughs> this was an advert that I saw in Stoke-on-Trent at the time this is Nigel Farage, who led the UKIP party back at that time. One of the most inspiring books I was reading uh, in 2018 was The Girl from Aleppo by Nuji Mustafa, which told the story of um, a disabled girl in Aleppo and her, uh, her, her fleeing to freedom in, to Austria 
eventually. Um, it's the most mind blowing story, mind blowing story, and it really gives you an idea of the struggle of of leaving Aleppo, and and how how overnight everything changed and people's lives changed. In In 2018, I was asked to uh, make some work for the Whitstable Biennale, uh, which is a really uh, amazing uh, Biennale in uh, a town in Kent. Um, I decided that I wanted to do something with the Syrian piece. I, I wanted to... Um, you know, close it really, and I got given this space next to a textiles designers, which was this um, really, really smart space. And what I did was I um, got thinking about the textile space. I got thinking about the heads, the fact that they were mass produced. Uh, I got thinking about the history of Mr. Bosson being a printmaker and uh, really into the idea of disseminating and uh, repeating an image. So I, what I did was I made a lithographic print which you could tile together um, and repeat almost like wallpaper. Um, but the lithographic print became not only the backdrop to the, to, to, to the installation of the heads, it also became uh, a publication. And later on, um, for the Platform Projects exhibition um, that it's in at the moment, it's become an edition of 30 prints. Um, so here, here, here are the here are the heads that, that are placed on top of the top of the lithograph prints. The lithograph prints are. They're a two-color print on white paper, so um, it's a silver and a black on white paper. Um, so. Uh, That's it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed my talk and I hope you enjoy the art fair in Greece. Many thanks.